I'd like to call to order this Ottawa County Board of Commissioners meeting. The date is September 30th. Our invocation today is by Commissioner Danberg, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Justin Robo. Please rise. Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity to meet today. We give thanks for safe travel and good health. We humbly ask you to provide for our farmers as they begin their harvest season. We pray for safety for all of our armed services, firefighters, first responders, and police officers. We thank you for our educational institutions and thank you for a good beginning to the school year. We continue to pray for our government. We ask that a government shutdown be avoided. We ask you for wisdom, guidance, and patience as we discuss and vote on issues which affect the citizens of Ottawa County. Help us to make responsible decisions. Bless our meeting today in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Justin, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Garcia. Present. Mr. Bauman. Here. Mr. Zylstra. Here. Mr. Dannenberg. Yes. Mr. Meppelink. Here. Mr. Terpstra. Here. Mr. Holfloor. Present. Mr. DeYoung. Here. Mr. Kyers. Here. Mr. Bergman. Here. And Mr. Fenske. Here. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you. Presentations of petitions and communications? None from us. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to ask Marcy Verbeek to come forward and give us a, a update on what's happening with the search committee. Good afternoon, board. Just want to let everybody know where we're at um, on the search committee for a new county administrator. Um, board Chair Bergman and I met with um, GovHR, that is the company that we have selected um, to help with um, the search process. Um, we met with them last week. Um, most of our information that we currently have on the position has already been sent over um, to GovHR. And um, tomorrow we do have our first committee meeting um, for the search committee. Um, we have worked on a timeline of um, the recruitment process and um, can share that shortly as soon as we get the updated version from GovHR. Um, but it slates us to hopefully uh, have a new commission, I mean, have a new uh, county administrator in place um, sometime in February. So that's wishful thinking. And so hopefully we will get there, but um, just wanted to give you an update of where we're at in the process. Any questions? Thank you, Marcy. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, the next thing is public comment. I want to begin today's meeting by announcing that Ottawa County hired former Republican Attorney General Mike Cox to independently review corporate counsel's opinions regarding the health department's limited mask mandate. And Attorney General Cox has agreed with the county's corporate counsel that the Board of Commissioners cannot reverse the health orders officer's order, cannot fire her for issuing this order, and cannot cut the health department's funding for issuing that order. All lawyers in West Michigan and Lansing that have looked at these issues appear to agree on these principles. The board fully understands the strong opinions on all sides regarding the limited mask mandate and individual commissioners have their own differing personal opinions on the mandate as well. But in our system of government, which has worked well for over 200 years, public health medical decisions are made best by medically trained individuals who have access to personal health information. With the public comment today, we will be allowing one minute, at the end of which we will take an additional 10 Zoom comments at the end of our, our regular meeting. So at this time, is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the commission? Whenever you have one minute, we will start the timer and give us your name and where you're from. First on the list is David. 
Hi, my name is Dave Bernoski. I'm from Port Sheldon Township in West Olive. By now, just looking at me, you probably know why I'm here. I'm, I was the last speaker, the last Zoom speaker at your last meeting, and I have the same thing to say. The law hasn't changed. The science hasn't changed. The public health department is doing the right thing. Boilerplate language in appropriations bills are not sufficient to counter the any budgetary actions for the health department and uh, please support the health department. And thank you very much. Thank you, David. Who's next? Next on the list is Donna. My name is Donna Rotman. I'm from Jamestown Township and I need your help. Help me understand the fact that when you begin your meetings with prayer, you ask God for wisdom and um, to conduct your meetings. What I don't understand is um, in the asking, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. And you find God's wisdom in his word. And in Ephesians, it says, <coughs> fathers train up your children. It doesn't say government. It doesn't say health department. It said fathers. And um, you say you can't do anything. But um, I just, uh, I, I don't know. That, that just doesn't sit well with me. And I don't, um, I can't figure it out. Um, so fathers have the responsibility. Thank you, Donna. And they are responsible. The Thank you, Donna. Mick. Uh, Mick, you are next. Good afternoon again, board. Good to see you. Um, Mick Bricker, and I'm running for the 89th District House seat. I uh, just wanted to reintroduce myself again. Um, I'm going to all of the different um, township meetings, school board meetings, and the um, you know the various city meetings just to get acquainted, see how they all work. Um, this one here has been probably the most lively, um, and but I respect what you guys are doing. Keep up the good work. I also respect what the citizens are doing, and I would just encourage you guys to keep up the good work. Um, this is. No doubt in my mind what our founding fathers envisioned when they set up our government in the first place. So um, um, people who are elected and people uh, who did the electing and um, then as they see some different things um, can stand up and, and get their voices heard. So thank you very much for what you're doing. Uh, see you in two weeks. Mick, the next time you're up here, you address the, uh, the chair, not the audience. Okay. I'm sorry. Next time you're up here, you address the chair. You don't make this a, a campaign stop. Okay. okay. Thanks. Who's next? Allison. Hi, my name is Allison Miedema and I reside in Talmadge Township. A question I've been pondering as of late. What is my role? What are our roles? When each person is participating in their role, yet caring for others and supporting them in their roles, the workplace becomes an environment that is a pleasure to work in. When one person or people tries to take on other roles, it may work for a while, but over the long haul, the place begins to feel like a sinking ship. When I look back at the last 18 months, many if not all of us have taken on roles that were not meant to be ours. I believe it has caused much unnecessary fear, anxiety, depression, divisiveness, and burdens. So what is my role? One role I believe I'm called to as a parent and educator is to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, that being children. It's past time to let parents make choices for their children. I'm asking for each of you to truly reflect on your role in the position God has given you as a county commissioner, but also to evaluate what may not be your role. Thanks Thank you, for Allison. listening. Next up is Sylvia. Hi, my name is Sylvia Rohde, and I live in Allendale. Masks, quarantines, loss of emotional development, and once-in-a-lifetime events. 
rising mental health and suicide rates, all for a virus with zero deaths ages zero to 19. As of October 1st, mask mandates violate state law and put health department funding at risk. Please hold the health department to the law. If you do not, the county will be held accountable. In some respects, defunding, defunding the health department wouldn't be so bad. In the midst of mass of mask and quarantine orders, the county advertises sexual health services for minors, as well as offers free condoms in numerous locations, hardly a socially distanced and masked activity. The health department also pushes a survey on children as young as 13 in our schools with questions like, if you have ever had oral sex, how old were you the first time? During the past three months, with how many people did you have sexual intercourse? Options up to six or more. Thanks, so Government yeah. stinks at That's being nice. a parent. We don't trust your judgment. Are we doing, are we doing five additional at this yes. time, mm -hmm. Mr. Yep. Chair? Okay, yep. so if we could have the next five individuals um, come into the boardroom. Harvey Nickel. Okay. I don't see him. The next individual is Emily. Emily. Emily Underhill from Allendale. Today I am speaking to the parents that are still in fear. I know what you're feeling. I've been in your shoes. I know that when you spray Lysol onto the Greek yogurts from Aldi, the metallic ink will bleed off on your paper towel. I have sanitized groceries that much. Do you know that the one thing we have in common is we both feel that our children are in danger. We both are doing what we feel is right to protect them at all costs. I am not your enemy and you are not mine. Those that are taking away our freedoms are our enemies. And there's that saying again, do it for the greater good. What good is resulting out of anything that we are being forced to do? Think about your last 18 months. Is that how you've wanted to live your life? Me, you, all of us, we've been lied to, and it's all about control. It is not living. It's slavery. Thanks, Emily. <laughs> Next, we have Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah Westheist from Hudsonville. This is not about the children's health. Kids can go to the stores without masks. They can go to a full stadium without masks. They can go play on the playground without masks. This is not about their health. They can go to restaurants. They can go to the fair. The fair was full just before school started. Full with children without masks. They go to school and they have to wear masks. This is not about their health. So what is it about? Do you wonder? It's about suppression. It's a muzzle. Why are you not wearing a mask? Why are we not wearing a mask? Only children. You're either being bribed, threatened, or paid off for not following what the parents want. It's not right. Proverb, Psalm 140, verse 8. Do not grant the wicked their desires. Oh, Lord, do not let their plans succeed, or they will become proud. Another one. It's Thanks, time sir. for our politicians Thanks, and sir. other public servants Paula. to stand up. Paula, and up. Who's next? Paula Baumhoff. You're done. Who's next? Paula Baumhoff. Hi. I'm Paula Baumhoff. I'm from Allendale. I have a five and a seven-year-old at Allendale Public Schools, and they have been masked for the last 18 months. They're not allowed to drink from the drinking fountains, and they're not allowed to socialize on the playground. Next week, Allendale is holding its high school dance, and 
The high schoolers do not have to wear masks or take any safety measures. It is ridiculous and irresponsible that local leadership is showing this sort of hypocrisy. So my question for the commissioners today is what kind of a legacy will you be leaving? Because right now the legacy I'm seeing when I look at the names is one of mass mandates and forced vaccinations. If you do not stop it at the mass, it will go to vaccinations. And if you won't stop and stand up for what's right, I'll vote for someone who will. Thank you. Thanks, Bella. Next we have Christy. Christy. Hi, uh, I'm Christy Mopplink from Zealand Township. Um, I don't have a prepared speech, but I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you for waking us all up. For We see the truth that's going on in the federal government. We see what's going on in our local government. We see what's going on in our schools, and we are waking up, and we're not going to stop fighting. This is just making us dig deeper into what's going on, paying more attention to what's going on in our schools. John 8, verse 31 through 32 says, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We're following the truth. We're asking you to do the same thing. Thanks, Christy. Who's next? Next we have Gretchen. Good afternoon. Um, my issue is... Masking will be another issue another day, but my issue is with the term limits that um, we're planning on or potentially voting on to extend from two years to four years for commissioner's position. I'm Gretchen Cosby, and I'm a master's prepared nurse who has worked in this community for approximately 10 years. I've served as an ER nurse, I have served as an educator, and I've also served in leadership roles. Most recently, I started the COVID tent for a local health system here for Ottawa County. Um, in every role that I have served within, I have tried to listen to the people that I serve. I've tried to then help the people that I serve. And again, I serve. I serve my patients. I serve my students. I serve my community. And I think you do that as well as commissioners. And so today, I would like to ask a question why, why it is important you were voted into two year terms. Can you answer that question for me though? We don't, this is a one way conversation. You get That's unfortunate. That's you unfortunate because without discussion, you can without send, discussion, how do we resolve anything? You can send those questions uh, to us, certainly, but not at this forum. Please know who's you are next? elected officials. You we are have, elected by this. Who's next? Harvey Nickel. Harvey, Harvey is in the room now. I'm Harvey Nickel from Jenison. The Ottawa County Health Department is following lockstep with the CDC, which means they are not following the science and they're not really concerned about our health. If the mandates were about their health, our health, why are they forcing masks on children when they do not work and they are harmful? Why is ivermectin banned for treatment of COVID? When India started using ivermectin, the number of cases dropped by 99% in Uttar Pradesh. They say the vaccine is safe and effective, but over 15,000 deaths are now listed on the bear site. The death rate is now the highest in the most vaccinated countries like Israel and Iceland. Also, the COVID shots are not effective at stopping infections. Harvard University is over 95% vaccinated, and yet the cases are so high, they had to stop on campus classes and go completely online. Ask yourself, why are over 83,000 healthcare workers in New York City, or New York, I mean, willing to be fired instead of taking these shots? The mandates are not about health, but are used to instill fear so people will take the jab. Please stop listening Thanks, to the lies Harvey. of the health department. I have some papers here oh, again. The bear right. side. Just go the ahead last and give them the comment is um, uh, Jeff King. Jeff King, Riley Street, Hudsonville. The fear and dread of the Lord is upon you. And the fear and dread of the people is upon you. You shall have no rest day or night until you submit to the will of the people. You derive your power from the consent of the governed. Thanks, Jeff. Is there anyone else? 
Uh, no other in-person public yeah. comment. All right, thank time. you, Mr. Chair. All right, we're gonna move on. Next thing on our agenda is approval of the agenda. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. So moved. Okay. Comments or questions? Justin, do you need to call the roll or what? Uh, not on this motion. Okay, Mr. Chair. All, right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Thank you. Action and reports, consent resolutions, Mr. Fenske. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to make the motion to approve consent resolutions one and two. Support. It's been moved and supported. Comments or questions? Justin, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Kyers. Yes. Mr. Hofluer. Yes. Mr. Mepplink. Yes. Mr. Terpstra. Yes. Mr. Garcia. Yes. Mr. Zylstra. Yes. Mr. Fenske. Yes. Mr. Danenberg. Yes. Mr. DeYoung. Yes. Mr. Bauman. Yes. And Mr. Bergman. Yes. Motion passes. Under action items from planning and policy, Mr. DeYoung. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Regarding the email retention, I move to approve revised email retention and archiving rules policy first reading. Support. Moved and supported. Comments or questions? All right. Would you call the roll, please, Justin? Mr. Zylstra. Uh, yes. Mr. Fenske. Yes. Mr. Bauman. Yes. Mr. Kyers. Yes. Mr. Garcia. Yes. Mr. Meppling. Yes. Mr. Dannenberg. Yes. Mr. DeYoung. Yes. Mr. Holtlor. Yes. Mr. Terpstra. Yes. And Mr. Bergman. Yes. Motion passes. Um, I, I just want to mention, Justin, um, uh, he and I talked about this in, at the, in before the meeting, that um, people need to understand that if they send these emails, they need to also CC Justin so that they are retained, correct? Yeah, I think there are a few emails that the commissioners receive. Yes. But if the and, clerk doesn't receive them, then we're not right. catalog, cataloging them. Right, and so I have been forwarding them to Justin. So just so the public knows, they need to be CC'd to you or they could sure. just send them to you, okay? All right, Mr. DeYoung, second. Thank, thank you again. Um, regarding the HIPAA compliance policy, I move to approve the revised HIPAA compliant policy first reading. Support. Been moved and supported. Comments or questions? Just a quick question. Yes. Um, Doug, is this for customers and employees or employees only? <clears throat> this policy is regarding um, our HIPAA compliance. So it pertains to our personal health information that we retain as an employer. It also governs what the health department does okay. with their patients. Any other comments? Dustin, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Bauman. Yes. Mr. Garcia. Yes. Mr. Meplink. Yes. Mr. Holtfloor. Yes. Mr. DeYoung. Yes. Mr. Zylstra. Yes. Mr. Terpstra. Yes. Mr. Kyers. Yes. Mr. Dannenberg. Yes. Mr. Fenske. <clears throat> yes. And Mr. Bergman. Yes. Motion passes. Regarding drone purchase, I move to approve the drone purchase and usage policy first reading. Mr. Mr. Chair, I will support that motion. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's been moved and supported. Comments or questions? Justin, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Terpstra. Yes. Mr. Holflor. Yes. Mr. Zylstra. Yes. Mr. Kyers. Yes. Mr. DeYoung. Yes. Mr. Meplink. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Bauman. Yes. Mr. Fenske. Yes. Mr. Dannenberg. Yes. Mr. Garcia. Yes. And Mr. Bergman. Yes. Motion passes. Regarding photography in the county building policy, I move to approve the photography in county building policy first reading. Support for the motion. I moved and supported. Comments or questions? Justin, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Kyers. Yes. Mr. Holtfloor. Yes. Mr. Garcia. Yes. Mr. Dannenberg. Yes. Mr. DeYoung. Yes. Mr. Zylstra. No. Mr. Terpstra. Yes. Mr. Meppelink. Yes. Mr. Bauman. Yes. Mr. Fenske. Yes. And Mr. Bergman. Yes. Motion passes. 
Next thing is from Finance Administration, Mr. Bauman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, regarding the fiscal year 2021 budget adjustments, I make a motion to approve the 2021 budget adjustments per the attached schedule. Support. Been moved and supported. Comments or questions? Justin, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Garcia. Yes. Mr. Fenske. Yes. Mr. Zylstra. Yes. Mr. Dannenberg. Yes. Mr. Terpstra. Yes. Mr. Meppelink. Yes. Mr. Holtfloor. Yes. Mr. Bauman. Yes. Mr. Kyers. Yes. Mr. DeYoung. Yes. And Mr. Bergman. Yes. Motion passes. Regarding the resolution regarding the distribution of convention facility tax revenues, make a motion to approve and authorize the board chairperson and clerk register to sign the resolution regarding the distribution of convention facility tax revenues to counties under public acts 106 and 107 of 1985. Support for the motion. Been moved and supported. Comments or questions? Justin, would you call the roll, please? Sir, Mr. Dannenberg. Yes. Mr. Bauman. Yes. Mr. Fenske. Yes. Mr. Meppelink. Yes. Mr. Terpstra. Yes. Mr. Garcia. Yes. Mr. DeYoung. Yes. Mr. Holtfloor. Yes. Mr. Zylstra. Yes. Mr. Kyers. Yes. And Mr. Bergman. Yes. Motion passes. Regarding the fiscal year 2022 budget resolution, I make a motion to approve and authorize the board chairperson and clerk register to sign the resolution for the fiscal year 2022 General Appropriations Act. Support for the motion. Moved and supported. Comments or questions? Justin, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Kyers. Yes. Mr. Holfloor. Yes. Mr. Meppelink. Yes. Mr. Terpstra. Yes. Mr. Garcia. Yes. Mr. Zylstra. Yes. Mr. Fenske. Yes. Mr. Dannenberg. Yes. Mr. DeYoung. Yes. Mr. Bauman. Yes. And Mr. Bergman. Yes. Motion passes. Regarding the communication tower lease agreement, I make a motion to approve and authorize the board chairperson and clerk register to sign the lease agreement with AT&T to install its wireless broadband equipment on the county's Fillmore Street, Stanton Street communications tower at a rate of $2,100 per month for a minimum of five years with automatic renewal for at least an additional five years. Support. Been moved and supported, comments or questions? Um, yeah. Uh, how many um, companies do we have on that tower right now? Two, Verizon and T-Mobile, which used to be Sprint. Okay. Oh, thank you. So are we spending <coughs> access to more residents? Yeah, so I mean, if you've ever tried to use AT&T service like here in this building, there's literally no service at all. So that this would provide um, really new cell service for AT&T customers in this area. So it's not going into homes where maybe they haven't been able to get broadband because of it being potential. Yeah, I mean, and again, this would be for cell service more than like okay. internet okay. coverage, but this is really for cell service. And currently, um, they're really in this area is very poor, if non existent, ET and T service. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah, yes. Question. Go ahead, John. How does that 2100 compare to the other two providers? Um, we get, and I have this at the committee meeting, um, I think it's it's pretty comparable. This is something that Al and Telerad, which is our new cell <coughs> our consultant, negotiated, uh, but I believe it's pretty comparable to what we get. Okay. In addition to this, um, any structural analysis that has to be done for the tower, they have to pay for. Uh, and if they want to add any equipment, then you know, we have the right to renegotiate that rate. So it's not like those rates are going up or down. They'll, they'll go up at each five-year renewal. They'll go up 10%. But in this general marketplace, it's not like those rates we're seeing a, over time. There's been a... If you listen to the cell companies, they think they should go down. <laughs> um, and we have received letters from either the cell companies or third party companies working on their behalf saying, hey, if we want to renegotiate, if not, we may take our equipment down and okay. you'll get no rental. So the tendency is towards lower prices. But we've never responded to those and we they still get requests for people, for, from companies to put their antennas on our towers. Okay. So uh, I think the demand will only increase. Okay. Anyone else? Justin, would you call the roll please? <clears throat> Sir, Mr. Fenske. Yes. Mr. Zylstra. Yes. Mr. Kyers. Yes. 
Mr. Garcia. Yes. Mr. Holtbord. Yes. Mr. Bauman. Yes. Mr. DeYoung. Yes. Mr. Meppelin. Yes. Mr. Dannenberg. Yes. Mr. Terpstra. Yes. And Mr. Bergman. Yes. Motion passes. Regarding the agricultural processing renaissance zone, I make a motion to approve and authorize the board chairperson and clerk register to sign the resolution approving an agricultural processing renaissance zone for a 15 year term in Holland Charter Township. Support. It's been moved and supported. Comments or questions? Is there somebody to talk to this, Roger? Or mm -hmm. Becky yeah. is here from. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's. Yeah. Good afternoon. Do you have specific questions, Phil, or do you want me to give a quick rundown? Just a rundown. Yeah, okay. that's good. All right. So as enabled by statute, the Michigan Renaissance Zone Act allows for a number of different um, renaissance zones. Agricultural processing is one of those. There is currently one in the county that's also by the organization seeking one today, Request Foods. Okay. Um, there are a number of other ones, tool and dye, renewable energy, probably roughly nine other renaissance zones in the county. The project today is seeking a renaissance zone so they can invest roughly $73 million into expanding their ready to eat facility here in the county. Uh, it will result in approximately 50 jobs. Uh, the organization already employs around 950 folks, about half of which live in Ottawa County. Um, their prior project that they employed the agri, uh, ag processing renaissance zone, see if I can spit that out properly, uh, resulted in roughly 270 jobs and 132 million in investment. And that was well above what was promised in the development agreement. So they really made good on that renaissance zone activity. Um, in terms of tax impact, which I'm sure Phil probably caught at the end of the action request there, it appeared to be a big number simply because at the time that I submitted this, I did not have the breakdown. So let's just briefly talk about the tax implications of it for the county. Um, the breakdown of it goes a little bit like this. It's going to be roughly $1.4 million of county, just county levied millages um, across the life of the project. So about 94 or so thousand dollars annually. Um, it does also abate school taxes, SET, school ops, and uh, intermediate school district, but those, as you know, are going to be replenished by the school aid fund, so those organizations will be made whole. Um, Herrick District Library is also um, abated under the Holland Charter Township piece that will also be made whole under the aid fund. Um, so the impact is fairly minimal for the investment and the jobs that it will create. Uh, that's just a brief overview. We do have some project proponents here that can answer any other in-depth questions that you might have, or um, if you have questions on anything I might have missed in that summary. Do they need to do wetland mitigation again on this? this? There's no wetland mitigation necessary on this site. There's an existing facility that they're going to reno, and they're going to construct an additional facility. Um, there will be some infrastructure added to support the project, and there are no wetlands on the site. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So the bulk of the, the abatement is going to be uh, felt by the township. I mean, we, we don't have a, a breakdown per se, but it yeah. seems as if the township is going to be. The bulk of the abatement, it, right. it's, it's roughly split. Well, I mean, if you're going to talk about what the, the taxes that will not be made whole, it's, right. a, it's about a 60-40 split, Holland Township. Well, it's probably 50-50 by the time you account for Herrick. So Holland Township will pick up about half and the county will pick up about half, roughly of the taxes that are not abated, that are not made whole through the school aid fund. So when it says foregone taxes of 11 million, that's not the real number. That is, um, it is, let's, let's call it a gross number, okay. not a net number. So once we, once we kind of add back in school taxes and right. Eric, what does that number look like? Right. Then we're talking on the County side about 1.4 and probably roughly similar on the Holland Charter oh, okay. Township so side. It's, so it's more like a $3 million. Yep. yep. Okay. Yes. Great. I appreciate that. My apologies for not having a better breakdown at the time of submittal. No, thank you. Um, Becky, you know, we're talking 3 million in tax abatement, but what are we getting right now on that property for taxes? Hmm. Right now on that property, that's a good question. I don't know if one of my teammates, I mean, Sarah, it, or maybe Manaka might know. I mean, basically, 20, per I guess year? what I'm getting at is yeah. we're not losing 1.5 million. Correct. We're just that. Yes. Thank you for that clip. Yes, that's correct. Yep. This is it's based on the investment and then increase in the value and all of that. That's accurate. Is this inclusive with our millages also? Is that included? I'm sorry, inclusive our, of what? Our three millages. Yes. 
Yep. Um, it would be roads, 911, CMH operations. Anyone else? So how do we make sure that we hold our feet to the fire, so to speak, to the 50 jobs? That, that is a good question. I asked that same question right out of the gate. So we can go and dig up all the data that we want on these Renaissance zones via the MEDC legislative reports. There's annual monitoring to make sure that these development agreements, they have a signed agreement that promises what will be delivered. And there are repercussions if they're not delivered. Um, zones can be uh, extinguished if they are not following through on the development agreement. So there's reporting annually. It's reported in the MEDC legislative res reports that are out on their portal for anybody to look up at any time. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Justin, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Zylstrup. Uh Yes. Mr. Fenske. Yes. Mr. Bauman. Yes. Mr. Kyers. Yes. Mr. Garcia. Yes. Mr. Mepelink. Yes. Mr. Dannenberg. Yes. Mr. DeYoung. Yes. Mr. Holtfloor. Yes. Mr. Terpstra. Yes. And Mr. Bergman. Yes. Motion passes. And finally, um, regarding the motion for implementation of cost of services for family planning program, I make a motion to approve the implementation of select fees on October 1, 2021 for the family planning services. Okay. All right, comments or questions? Justin, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Bauman? Yes. Mr. Garcia? Yes. Mr. Mepelink? Yes. Mr. Holtlor? Yes. Mr. DeYoung? Yes. Mr. Zylstra? Yes. Mr. Terpstra? Yes. Mr. Kyers? Yes. Mr. Dannenberg. Yes. Mr. Fenske. Yes. And Mr. Bergman. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Under appointments, none. Discussion items, none. So we're up to report of the county administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as you uh, mentioned at the outset of the meeting, uh, the county did request a second legal opinion um, to uh, confirm or not confirm our corporation counsel's legal opinion that the health department does not have the uh, statutory authority to override a health department order. So we did retain the services of the Mike Cox law firm, a former Republican attorney general in the state of Michigan. And we asked him to answer four questions. And so the first question and, and I'm just going to give, uh, and this is a 13 page opinion, so I'll give a little brief summary of that. But the first question was, does the Ottawa County Board of Commissioners have the power to reverse or override a health officer's epidemic order? And his answer is no, the Ottawa County Board of Commissioners does not have the power to reverse or override a health officer's epidemic order. The second question was, does the Ottawa County Board of Commissioners have the power to terminate the health officer's employment for issuing an epidemic order? And his response was a qualified yes. Uh, because the health officer is a public officer by virtue of her appointment, she is not simply an at-will employee. And so the Ottawa County Board of Commissioners may only remove her if one, uh, the board opines that she is incompetent to execute properly the duties of the office, or if it is satisfied that the officer or agent is two, guilty of official misconduct, or three, habitual or willful neglect of duty. But it only may remove her for the latter two reasons after it conducts a hearing where um, Lisa and her attorney can be heard. Uh, the third question was, could the health officer be civilly and criminally liable if she withdrew her mask mandate because of political pressure? And his response was a qualified yes. If Ms. Stepanovsky were to withdraw her mask mandate solely for political reasons or pecuniary reasons to preserve her position, then it may be that a court could find that she demonstrated indifference to whether harm would result as to be the equivalent of intending harm. And so she would lose her immunity under state law. Further, if a prosecutor were to determine that Lisa rescinded her mandate solely for a political or pecuniary reason, then that prosecutor could charge her with misconduct in office. 
any answer here is necessarily speculative because it would depend on facts and evidence that are not before us today. And then the fourth question was, can the Board of Commissioners defund the Public Health Department in response to the health officer issuing an epidemic order? And the answer is no, at least not entirely because Michigan law compels each Michigan county to provide health services to the public through a health department under state law and mandates a minimal level of funding. If the county were to fail to do so, it would risk losing control of the department. And then he goes into, those are the brief answers to that. He goes into much more detail about that. Um, just a couple points. One, this, this letter is, is covered under attorney-client privilege. Uh, my recommendation uh, would be for the board to waive that privilege and allow us to release this opinion to the public. Um, we've got nothing to hide and then it would at least show the public um, what uh, laws the, the board is following in terms of the actions it has taken um, to date. Um, we've also heard um, that the state uh, governor and legislature uh, reached an agreement on the state budget. And in that budget, uh, there was boilerplate language in there from the legislature that said, um, if there is a health department order as of October 1st, 2021, uh, then, um, funding would be withheld from uh, the public health department. Uh, the governor has, um, through the advice of, of the governor's council, has declared that to be uh, unconstitutional and unenforceable. And it's our understanding after speaking with the governor's office that the uh, state budget director intends to appropriate those funds as, as presented in that budget so that the health department would not be losing funds um, as a result of having our current order uh, in place. So at, at this time, we as a county don't plan to, to, to really take any different action with respect to the order on mask mandates uh, because we don't feel that um, you know, there's any jeopardy to receiving state funding for our health department. Um, so again, my recommendation, if, if the board would agree, is, is to waive attorney-client privilege for this, allow us to release, just release this to the public and then the, the public can see the reasons by which uh, the, the board has taken the current position it has. We need a motion on that, John? I think it would be a good idea. I'll make that motion. Second. That second. Motion. Comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I wonder, Mr. Chairman, I wonder if it would be uh, possible to send these to some of our state legislators who apparently don't understand exactly what the uh, law expects us to do as, as quickly as possible. If, if the board uh, does approve waiving privilege, then we can, mm. we can take care of that. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Chair, comments? that would be under a, a separate motion that we have to do for the privilege thing, right? That we have yeah. to, okay. So if I understand the comment I have uh, on the, the motion regarding the, if I think I understand what Phil's motion was. So that the, the house, and correct me, the House passed, the Senate passed, and the governor signed into law the budget. The budget states no funding if, it doesn't state if this or if that, it just says no funding, correct? So until a court makes that decision, which we have courts to make those decisions and judges, that's what, why, why we have a court system, okay? And if we're following the law, and if we've said all along, we're with the health man, with the health orders, we're following the law. Shouldn't we be following the law now until the court says yay or nay that it's either yes, up or down on this re regarding the funding? I'm I'm confused as we're in, we are interpreting law, but we're not supposed to be interpreting. That's left to the judges to interpret. Our job is to follow the law. Correct. I can answer that. So <clears throat> this is Lansing intramurals. It really doesn't affect us directly. The question is, would we get our check? Right. And the state has to follow the instructions of the attorney general. The attorney general has instructed the budget director to pay Ottawa County. So the burden on trying to get a judge to overturn the mechanics of state government is on the legislature right now. 
So they would have to sue uh, the attorney general, the governor, and the budget director to, comp to compel really the unappropriation of their appropriation to Ottawa County. Don't know if they're gonna do it. We'll have to wait and see, but the ball really is in the legislature's court. They need the judges ruling in order to uh, set aside the mechanics of state government. We don't have any standing one way or the other. Although if they don't, the Headley Amendment and God rest his soul, Dick Headley, uh, was out to protect local government. And it says expressly in Article 929 that the state may not reduce essential services for state government. The budget bill could not have been written more directly in opposition to the Headley Amendment because it says if there's a health mandate in place on October 1, appropriations for essential public health services are unappropriated. It couldn't be more directly in conflict with the Headley Amendment. That may be why the Attorney General, I am not privy to why she told the budget director he must ignore that language. But uh, again, that's kind of state government intramurals. Um, we're expecting our check. If we don't get our check, I'll let you know um, because it's a blatant violation of our rights, but I'm confident that we're going to get it unless a judge says otherwise. That makes sense? Kind of. Uh, it just, I, <laughs> and I guess I'm looking for much more of a, it's either this way or that way and none of the gray area in the middle. And I feel that we're looking for, we're finding, I mean, when, when the, the way I understand civics, when the House and the Senate and the governor all sign, that's the law until the judicial branch either changes it Okay, or says it's unconstitutional. So we, just did. we have to, but they haven't ruled on that yet. They haven't, you know, we, so that's well, the part I'm just. It, it, if, so we can go back to my office and I'll show you the law. It's all <coughs> in the books. They're brown, binders yeah. of books. This isn't in there. Well, no, but October 1, turn, it, it won't will be. be in there on October 1 either. Okay. It's just an approach because the appropriations don't get in the positive law of the state. So if the legislature repeal 2253 of the public health code, yes, that would invalidate those orders by rule of law. They chose not to do that. When they chose not to do that, they rendered their um, power subject to the attorney general who has said that language in an appropriation bill does not bind the state budget director. That's now the official legal rule because the state has to follow that opinion. So, uh, Doug, is there a, but is there a difference between the appropriations budget versus a regular bill that goes through normal channels of it going through the House, the Senate, the governor coming back for a conference decision on how they're gonna handle that versus this particular issue? Yeah, so one of the problems with the what the uh, legislature did, they can on October 2, reduce and or eliminate Ottawa County's funding. They could do that. Now, if they do that, the governor will likely veto it. I'm sure she will. But that's their only power. Their power over the purse is to give money or to take money away. What they can't do is give it and take it away at the same time. And that's what they've tried to do. And so, yeah, they're out of their lane is what the attorney general has said. I'm confident a court, if the legislature chooses to sue, will agree they're out of their lane. And we'll say to them, if you want to strip out of a county of its funding, then do it. 
but do it the way you can do it with a, an appropriation that amends their funding. Now, if they were to do that, I just described Article 9 of the Headley Amendment would absolutely prevent them from doing that. But we would then, as Randy has said, I'd have to go into court and say, this is a blatant unconstitutional act. Give us our money and give us our damages and our attorney's fees, to which a court would likely say yes. That's why the legislature chose not to go in that route. I don't think on October 2, they're going to go in that route because it'll get vetoed. But this is kind of gamesmanship by the legislature. It's no more binding than the letter they sent you. And they know how to do it right. They didn't do it right. So Lansing has stepped on it, on that activity. It's nothing more than intramurals at this point. We'll have to wait and see if they retreat and go back to what their power is because they could strip us of funding lest we get the decision Randy's talking about. I don't think they'll do it. I don't think they'll get past the governor in order to do that, but we'll see. Well, so it's my understanding, uh, Doug and John, that, that every year that an appropriations bill is passed, that there are such stipulations put in there by one party or another, depending who the governor is, that they know probably has no teeth to it, but it's more of a, I'm showing my constituents that I'm doing everything I can on my part, knowing that most likely it would not be followed through at yeah, they consider that boilerplate level. language, and 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 in years past, that's been done on a number of issues, you know, pre-COVID, and in this particular case, the the governor rejected that boilerplate language in her transmittal letter uh, when she says when she signed the budget, she specifically um, struck out those particular boiler boilerplate language. It, it's boilerplate language that's been put in many for many many years by both parties. Um, to, to put things in, and then it allows the governor of an opposing party to say, no, I don't agree with this. I think it was a great question, Randy. Yeah. Uh, before we vote on the motion, could you actually repeat it just so I get it, understand it exactly? The motion, the motion was just to release the, the, <coughs> the, release the opinion. Okay. Just the opinion. Yeah, it was to waive attorney-client <laughs> privilege on this legal opinion so that we could release it to the public. That's, that's the motion for that. Correct. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Yes. Chair, I just had one clarification um, because this issue came up previously a few months ago when a motion was made after the approval of the agenda. Right. My understanding is that approval takes two thirds vote if the agenda has already yes. been set. Correct. Is that correct? I think that's what was decided on a few right. months ago. Yes, I believe that's correct. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to clear it up on before that. we. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's what they did. Then that would be binding unless they suspend yeah. that role. So let's Thank see if you we can. Thank you, for reminding us of that. Okay. Yes. Two thirds. Okay. Are we ready to vote? Again, you want to repeat what the motion is, Justin? So my uh, my understanding of the, the motion to waive a attorney client privilege for the legal opinion of the Mike Cox law firm. Correct. All right, has been moved and seconded. Okay, Justin, you want to call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Terpstra? Yes. Mr. Holtfleur? Yes. Mr. Zylstra? Yes. Mr. Kyers? Yes. Mr. DeYoung? Yes. Mr. Meplink? Yes. Mr. Bauman? Yes. Mr. Fenske? Yes. Mr. Dannenberg? Yes. Mr. Garcia? Yes. And Mr. Bergman? Yes. Motion yeah, passes. I believe we have two thirds there. I think so. <laughs> Anything else from the county administrator? Nothing? No. I thought this would take enough of your time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, general information comments, meetings attended. So I'm gonna start with Frank. Yes, we'll I just wanted on. to clarify one point with John on, on the motion we just passed. Will we be putting that in where exactly in for the well, public? We, we can put it on the web, we can put it on the website. Um, I believe Shannon can probably put it on our Facebook page. And then it, obviously any requests we get for it, we'll just simply release it. Okay, good, thank you. Yeah, just a quick clarification on the public comment email. I didn't quite get the discussion that you had with Justin as far as him being CC'd on emails versus emails being addressed to public comment at myauto.org. What is the difference on that? 
So I think what we have previously done in practice for um, a long time is if, if the clerk's office gets the clerk of the board gets communication for the board, we put it in the correspondence log. But what's been happening is, you know, constituents obviously are, are connecting with you guys directly and some of them are CCing the entire board yes. and framing it as a public comment, but our office hasn't been CC'd on it. So we have no way of knowing that. I would almost suggest possibly if a, if a commissioner receives an email that's meant for public comment, I wonder if we could forward it to that public comment email now, because we are receiving emails in that okay. uh, format. Um, okay. But as Chair Bergman and I were discussing earlier, he had gotten emails that were not in the public comment inbox, weren't in my inbox. So okay. they so weren't. That was the reason why I was forwarding them to Justin, okay. so that they would be in the public comment. Okay, good. So yeah, I mean, I think re if residents know that we have a public comment, email box specifically for for right. that i mean we get questions through the email sure you know i'm not sure which email is public comment versus questions for the board but if folks want to send a public comment that's going to get in the correspondence log officially then they should go straight to the public comment at yeah. myauto.org right yeah i mean and that's probably just a communication issue okay. that we yeah I, I think that's a great tool that that folks you know and i've talked to you know some some emailers about that option that if they want to use that and they were pleased so anyone else yeah mr fansky yeah just a point of clarification um when it's uh placed on the website our county website or uh, gov delivery or something like that will there be a, an official press release regarding attorney cox's um, decision or not it, we were we were working on we we're working on a draft public statement and so it, we would link it that public statement to this as well okay. and, the, and the public statement also was addressing the the budget issue as well okay so okay. anyone else yes yes um a couple things um Last Monday, we had a, um, a, a great chamber breakfast uh, in Holland. I think uh, Commissioner Dannenberg was there, and I don't remember if Commissioner Zalstra was there, I believe. Um, and a great presentation by our clerk, Justin Roebuck, about the election uh, election process and stuff and, and the work that they're doing. And there's a great presentation, Justin. Thank you for that. Um, we also had a Farm Bureau opportunity to serve at um, uh, this past week, and several of us were at the <coughs> Farm Bureau supporting um, th what, th what they're doing. Um, and then um, today, some of us had the opportunity to take a parks tour with many of our parks department people. And we all, and we all seen different things today. But the most important thing to me that I seen today was a commitment, enthusiasm, and passion from the staff, the park department staff, like we have through a lot of our county employees here, we have that. But this morning it was kind of showcased our parks and park staff, but we have an incredible, uh, incredibly enthusiastic group of men and women in the parks department who, um, this is really not a job for these folks. They're, they're, they're committed, they're, they're involved. So I was really pleased to see uh, that the, the work that they're doing um, in our Ottawa County parks. And then I wanted to mention if I could briefly, there is a couple other opportunities to serve tonight. The, um, the uh, farms uh, are the tapas meeting is happening in Hudsonville tonight um, at uh, the uh, Terra Square. And then there is a also a GOP meeting tonight, if I can mention that. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Chair, oh, Roger. Yes. Um, yeah, just a comment on, on um, we're all getting a lot of emails, obviously, on resolutions and stuff like that. And I have a regarding. There's a lot of different resolutions are, if I understand correctly, resolutions are more or less a statement of fact as us as commissioners as to where we stand on a particular issue, whether it's immigration, the Grand River project that we talked about, different things throughout, throughout the time. Um, they don't change the law. Okay. They don't, they don't change anything. It's just a statement as to where we feel as a board um, and gives everyone an opportunity to see. One of the things that's a very um, issue that seems to be a lot of concern that really doesn't come directly to us, but I think on the vaccine passport issue, we've all seen these emails, we get lots of them, okay? Um, can I respectfully request of the, uh, whether it's administration or planning and policy that 
at least you discuss it at committee. I know we're not supposed to do, I don't want to go out of order and bring it, you know, oh, okay. uh, here. Okay, but we, right. adjust it at committee or discuss it at committee. <laughs> and if you feel that we could take up a vaccine passport resolution as other counties have done throughout the state and give, give an opportunity for us to vote on it in public, people know where we stand on it. Um, it's not going to change anything. It's not going to make it or break it. Okay. But we know that um, that's what, but at least it gives the people so they know where everyone, every commissioner stands. So that's really all I'm asking, Mr. Chair, if we could have that. Right. Randy, if I'm understanding this right, if you wanted to go to plan and policy, um, you, you say vaccine passport. Is that the same thing as vaccine mandate in your mind? No. Okay. No, a vaccine passport is uh, the way I understand it is something where it could be on your phone or or a document that you carry that says you are vaccinated in order to get into. Um, now, granted, private businesses and places they can request to mm -hmm. see proof of vaccination, and that's their right because they're a business. You don't have to go to that business, right? You don't have to shop there or, or attend a, a whatever there. But in general, a passport that is allowing you know just to a function in society. Um, I don't think that is something that we, that's just my personal opinion, is something that I really, I need to know whether or not you are or not vaccinated through a passport, okay? So it's just, and, if, and I can get you some more information on that. Maybe you can discuss it and, uh, you know, just take a look at it. But it really comes down to, well, well, some European companies are doing, or that. European countries are doing it, but I don't think that fits the United States. Okay, thank you. Health and Human Services, Phil? Uh, Chairman. Should that be the Health and Human Services Committee? Could be. I mean, I don't you guys know. can talk about it. Okay. Phil? Yeah, I just, okay. I just like to thank the commissioners that were at the MAC conference. Um, it was a great honor and privilege to be uh, stated in as a new MAC president. Um, thank you, Justin, for swearing me in. I uh, appreciate you doing that. And uh, I just want to know that as far as working on platforms for the state, with our lobbyists and platforms for um, Washington, D.C., you know, if you have anything that you want to share with me or stuff that you want to see on the platforms, you know, it's, it's really good to have the ins and outs that I have now that I can also represent Ottawa County and the whole state. So thank you for your support, guys. Okay. Yep. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Bergman, I just wanted, and, and I don't want to make this a debate, uh, but I, I know that we did put a rules policy when it came to resolutions. And, and I think that that would need to be reviewed by our uh, attorney as well as to what kind of resolutions we could uh, propose and support and so forth. Uh, my thought, Randy, is if all of a sudden you know, we got an influx of uh, emails saying that we support uh, you know, passports, uh, for vaccine, would we then adopt a resolution if that's what they also requested? So I guess what I'm pointing is that there's always the two sides and that's where, why we put something in place as to what types of uh, if resolutions we would entertain or not. So I, I think it's important for either uh, one of you guys as chair to talk about that, if, whoever's going to talk about it. Alan's chair. Oh, Alan's chair. Alan's chair. Okay, all right. Okay. Turn it up. Okay. All right. Anyone else? If not, I've got a couple of comments. First, I want to uh, just um, express my appreciation for the, the work that Phil does for us, representing us at MAC. Um, congratulations on being becoming president. And um, I look forward to the work that you can do. And I think representing each one of us, as well as Ottawa County, is um, a real uh, asset for us. And so I really appreciate that. Thank you. And also, I want to um, just welcome uh, Madison on board because uh, she's in training today. And she's going to take it over next time, right? Okay, good. So welcome. Okay, with that, uh, we're up to public comment again. Uh, we're going to give you one minute. Uh, give us your name and where you're from. And Justin, do you have the names? So we do not have any more additional in-person comments. Okay. Uh, we do have eight individuals on Zoom at this point. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the, the commission at this time? Okay. Go ahead. Give us your name and where are you from? My name is Lynn Snowink. I'm from Hudsonville. Okay. 
And I'm just wondering what's happening with um, Governor Whitmer's um, saying that the kids can be unmasked and why that's not being addressed today. Okay. It's okay. supposed to be effective October 1. That's tomorrow. You can ask that question of perhaps um, Justin could get you the answer sometime, but uh, we don't answer questions at this meeting. Okay, thank you. I would like to hear. Why don't you give them your name and address later on? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Or Justin or Sherry, right? One of you, right? Okay. Anyone okay. else like to address the commission at this time? If not, we have some folks on Zoom. Yes, sir. All right. So, um, and is it correct, Mr. Chair, we're uh, taking 10 That's Zoom correct. comments. Okay. We have eight Ten. comments so currently. Um, and the first one is Cindy. Um, Cindy, you should see a, um, there are, can, can you hear us? Cindy? Cindy Lorkey. Okay. We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm Cynthia Lorkey. I live in Grand Haven Township. I first was going to talk about the mass mandates and the impacts on the development of the children and that you are violating OSHA law because this virus is not in the workplace. It's being brought in and masks do not stop aerosols going through. And I just wonder, the government has not validated the mask mandates as being effective. So you're talking about the health department director. Uh, I think she's incompetent. She's not following the science. Uh, she is doing this for political reasons, the mask, so she can get funding by the state and federal for her department. And then she's using those funds for, for things that the parents in this county do not agree with. Thank you, Cindy. Who's next? Um, next, we have Liz. And Liz, if you could just state your name and uh, jurisdiction. You have one minute. Liz, are you muted? Okay, you're good. Can you hear us, Liz? All right, let's go on to the next one. We'll move on and we'll just uh, come back to Liz here in a second. Um, next is Jeff and Becky Dieter. Yep, this is Becky Dieter, Spring Lake Village. Um, you say you do not have the power to change or rescind the orders or to fire the health director or to restrict their funding. But as our elected officials, you should all, and as, as members of, of Ottawa County and your legal counsel should be researching to see what needs to be done to change this. Why are you okay with one single dictator making decisions for our entire county? Instead of just throwing your hands in the air and just saying nothing we can do, stand up and represent your constituents and make changes. With the governor signing the budget, including language to remove mandates, which you discussed today, I understand that we don't have to say this and we can just, oh, still get our check anyway, but why not? This is your open door opportunity. Stand up and remove the mandate. So far, Ionia and Berrien County both have done it and Allegan is doing it as of 5 p.m. today. So take advantage of this opportunity. Also limiting speaking time to one minute is unacceptable. It's almost like you are trying to play games and limit what we can say publicly at these meetings. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, next is Shelby Visser. Shelby, you need to unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Yes. Awesome. Shelby Visser from Olive Township. You guys make it a point to pray before every meeting. You prayed for a lot of people today, but you left out a big group in your prayer, and that's us parents. You aren't praying for us for for us to be good parents, to teach children how to be good people, or to grow good community members. And I think it's because you're scared of the power we have. We're going to pull our children from your schools, and we're teaching them what it's like to live in a democracy and what a government's role is supposed to be. You think you're winning now, but just wait. We're teaching our kids to understand what's going on and join us in the fight for what's right. Your time will come to an end, and history will be on our side. Thank you. Thanks, Shelby. Who's next? Next, we have Ross. 
And if you could just state your name and jurisdiction, Ross, if you have one minute. Uh, Ross Ziegenthaler, Spring Lake Township. Um, I'm asking you to follow the law just as Allegan, Berrien, and Ionia counties have and not interpret the law as you have been advised to by your attorneys um, and rescind the mandate by 1159 tonight. Um, the county mass mandate to prevent budget loss as stated in SB 082. Uh, Michigan S State Bill SB 082 Section 250 states the director or local health officer shall not issue or enforce any orders or other directives that require an individual in the state who is under the age of 18 to wear a face mask or face covering. It has been 566 days and we still have no random control trials showing masks do not harm children. In our society, the burden of proof is not, it, the burden of proof is on those who say it is safe. That's you guys, not on the public to prove something in being mandated will harm them. So please for your own liability protection and protection, provide proof that masking kids does not harm children. Um, Kids are resilient, will not protect you from personal liability. Thanks, Ross. Who's next? All right, next we have Lene M. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Lene Monera, Allendale. We know this board will not unappoint Ms. Stefanowski, even though you have the statutory authority to do so. So I won't spend time on that but you also have the statutory authority to require Ms. Stefanowski to make a report under oath justifying the mask mandate. The mandate is partly premised on a finding of imminent danger. Board respectfully require her to make a report under oath showing us how unmasking kids age four to 12 presents an imminent danger. Have Ms. Stefanowski show us the data to justify this mask mandate. On another note, the health department recently asked our school principals to sign an attestation in which they promised to enforce the mask mandate. Why did the health department ask our principals to do this? Is it because our principals have no duty to enforce the mask mandate? And by signing the attestation, they are somehow creating a legal duty where no legal duty otherwise would exist? Thank you. Hello. Who's next? Next we have David. Rody. Can you hear us, David? David, you're up. Children, I own I apologize, we, we are having some technical difficulties. David, I, you're not coming through. David, you're breaking up a lot. So you, you must be um, having some issues with your internet. Can you come back? Okay, why don't we go to the next oh, person? Sure. Can you hear me? Oop. Let me let me try this one more time. Go ahead, David. We'll try again. He's muted. Okay. David, can you hear us now? Yes, Dave Rody, Allendale. I believe masks should be a parent choice and a personal choice. Ionia and Berrien counties, have men, as mentioned, have rescinded their mask mandates. They have higher COVID transmission levels than Ottawa County. I ask you, commissioners, investigate this. Find out what they did. We need to look into it. I called eight commissioners on September 21st. Three of them either picked up the phone or called me back. I left voicemails with five other commissioners. No calls back. It's been nine days. I'm very disappointed. I look forward to those five commissioners calling me back this evening. I asked one of the commissioners that I talked to if a mandate was put to a vote, how they would vote. They told me how they would vote. They also mentioned this person that they were fearful that they would be personally sued and lose everything they own. This is not the mindset I want for my commissioner. This is clearly putting self-interest ahead of representing the people. Maybe Ottawa County Council is putting fear tactics in to try to control the commissioners. I don't know. Who's next? All right, next we have Melissa. Um, and then... Hello. Can you hear? Melissa, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Um, I'm Melissa with uh, the Ottawa County. 
And I just absolutely don't agree with any of this mask or what we're doing with the health commissioner. Um, we have in our region, which is region six, we only have 273 adult confirmed cases and only seven hospitalized pediatric cases. And that comes off of the michigan.gov website, um, which means you're more likely to get struck by lightning than you are to get and or die from COVID. So I don't understand why we are masking our children. And if you guys, you guys keep saying you have no authority, you have no authority over the health department, then what exactly do you have authority for? I mean, you guys need to check yourself and decide that the decisions you're making, because if you can make all of these resolutions, you can also make resolutions for this. So I just think you should double check yourself. And if you're voting a certain way because it aligns with what your thoughts and your beliefs are, then you need to step down. You are all public officials. You were voted to listen to us, not to do what you think is best. All right. Um, let's try returning to Liz to see if we have a connection here. Hey, guys, can you hear me? Yes. Can. Wonderful. OK, Liz Ramey, Allendale. To those looking to benefit themselves politically, COVID presents an opportunity to advance plans targeted to undermine American freedom. Mandatory masking policies provide a foundation to weaponize the virus against American liberty now and in the future. You may have found some lawyers to agree with you that you are powerless, but clearly not all or there wouldn't be pending lawsuits. You can let Lisa go based on being incompetent as masking children is ignorance and there is no emergency in Ottawa County for kids. Masking does not protect them. You could use this budget as a way out from which you refuse to acknowledge. Other counties have done it. I am fully against masking my young children and sacrificing their emotional and developmental health for the illusion of other safety. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. That does complete the original eight. We do have two additional um, hands raised since that time. So that would okay. bring it to 10. All right. That's good. Um, we have Kathleen. Yes. Kathleen, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I'm Kathleen Kasnitz. I am calling in today. Um, I am also against the mass mandates against our young children. I just wanted to throw out some numbers um, because I doubt that people are taking the time to look into how schools look when they are mask optional versus mask mandate. So my children attend Spring Lake schools and we, unfortunately, our superintendent has chose to mask K through 12 and we so far, I'll give you the number of positive cases. So we've had 34 so far. Coopersville masks K through six, 23. And I'll give you schools relative to our size to make it appropriate. Schools that are optional like Fruitport have 29. And schools like Oak Ridge are optional. They have 31. Oakview, optional, 45. You know, Mona Shores, now they're double our size at Spring Lake, and they have less than double, 57. So we can see that masks aren't making a difference at all in the spread of positive cases among our children. Next, we have Sandra. Can you hear us? Hi, Hi. Sandy Batten, Spring Lake. Um, <clears throat> I agree with the other uh, commenters especially Becky Dieter, I want us to say now is your opportunity to get in the mask order. You've said repeatedly you have no power to do that. We have elected county leaders who are the legal governing authority for the health department who say they have no authority over the health department. Elected as Republicans who have been voted in to uphold limited government and work to rein in bureaucracy. Instead, you are in fact advancing overreach. Now, based on the requirements to receive funds, we understand you need to end the order to receive those funds. We will be watching you, commissioners. Republicans who have been voted in to uphold limited government and reigning in bureaucracy will be watching you. For if you find if you um find the power to rescind the order, and then if you reinstate the mandates after the funds are received, we'll know that this clearly isn't about health. It's about politics and control. There being no other agenda and, and any more agenda items, we are adjourned.